we all have a big court date coming. We have a big court date coming and nobody gets out of it. In this court, it's going to just be you standing all by yourself and I will stand all by myself. 2 Corinthians 5.10 says, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Why must we do this? Because we are all sinners. I am not any better than anyone else you've ever seen. I am a sinner just like the worst guy that you've ever known. We are all sinners. Romans 3.23 For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. It does not say some, it says all. That means I can't count myself out of this and play like I'm better than you are. I'm in it with you. We're all in it just the same. We're all sinners. Now this court is going to end up going one of two ways for you. It's going to go one of two ways. It's either going to result in death or it's going to result in life. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. What does wages mean? Wages means we earned it. That's a wage. You earn a wage. Wages means we actually put in the work necessary to get it. We earned death because we sinned. But, it says, the gift of God... See, you don't deserve a gift. A gift is given because the giver loves you and wants to give it. Isn't that cool? The gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. And so your case is going to go one of two ways, death or life. And just like Paul had accusers at his hearing, we are also going to have an accuser at our hearing. The Bible says in many places this accuser is Satan. Now Satan's a liar, and I'm sure he will lie in his accusations against us, just like they were doing against Paul. But the Bible says we earned death because of our sin, so that means we deserve to be condemned. Even though Satan's going to accuse us, we, we deserve it anyway. Everyone on trial needs legal representation. And all these charges against us seem so completely hopeless because we're actually guilty of these sins that are going to be brought against us. It would have been hopeless had it not been for the one who is going to come to our defense. 1 John 2, 1 through 2, says, We have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he himself is the propitiation, which means he is the peacemaker or the appeaser. He himself is the propitiation for our sins, and not only for ours only, but also for the whole world. Jesus is going to speak for those of us who are his. That's exciting to me. 1 Timothy 2.5 says, For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. And so although that we're guilty of sin, although we actually deserve condemnation. We put in the work necessary for it. Remember, the Bible says it's a wage. We earned it. God gave us a way to be saved from the penalty of our sins by putting Jesus to death on the cross and so that if you come to believe in Jesus, then your sin penalty upon belief, your sin penalty will be transferred off of you and put onto Christ at the cross. So that he can die with your sins upon him instead of you dying with your sins upon you. 2 Corinthians 5.21 For God made him who knew no sin to be sin for us. That we might become the righteousness of God in him. Jesus did this for us as a gift. Because why? He loves us. I've given the gospel message to people before and they're like, why would God do that? They just don't get it. They don't understand that somebody actually loves them enough to want to do this because God loves us. And so on my judgment day, when the judge who sits at the judgment seat sees that I'm in Jesus Christ on your judgment day, if you come to believe in Jesus Christ and turn from your sins, ask Jesus to be Lord of your life, that means he's the boss on your judgment day, at the judgment seat of Christ, if you believe in Jesus, He will see Jesus Christ having paid your penalty. And when He sees Jesus Christ, He can declare to you, your debt has been paid by Jesus, not guilty. 
For those who reject Jesus Christ, there is a judgment. It's a different judgment that is separate from what's called the Bema. It's a different judgment that is separate from the Bema seat, which is the judgment seat. The Bema seat is what it's called. This judgment for the unbelievers is called the Great White Throne Judgment. I don't have time to get into it, but you don't want to be anywhere near the Great White Throne Judgment. Because at that judgment, God is going to send those who rejected Jesus to condemnation. If you reject the gift of eternal life that God offers you through Jesus, then you will be cast into the lake of fire, which the Bible says is called the second death. And it's a dirty little four-letter word that society tells me I'm not allowed to say anymore called hell. The great white throne judgment. You don't want to be there. You see, the Bema seat is where we're judged on righteousness. You've probably seen a Bema seat before and not known it. They have Bema seats, or Bema as they call it, in the Olympics. When you have your first place, second place, and third place guy, they stand on a little podium. They go, I judge you on what you did right. I judge you first, I judge you second, and I judge you third. So you see, judgment is not always just a terrible thing like the world says, oh, don't judge me. Hey, judgment can be a good thing. I judge what you did right. You believed in Jesus Christ. Your debt's wiped out. Now all these wonderful works you did in Jesus' name, I judge you now based on that. And like the guy at the Olympics, they get their medals put on and they get their their wreath put on their head. The Lord is going to give us rewards. He's going to put a crown on our head. That's going to be a good judgment. Glad, Glad of that. Do you want eternal life? You don't have to do anything to get it. Don't think I can't pull it off or I've been so bad or for some reason God would never save me. That's not what the Bible says. Trust me, you don't want what we deserve. You don't want what we deserve. If so, if you want this eternal life, then it's time to make Jesus your Lord. And I don't mean to play scare tactics, but nobody gave you any guarantee that you will be alive tomorrow. I think every day, I think it's 40,000 some odd people step over the line into eternity and most of them had no clue it was going to be their turn. And so, since nobody gave you this guarantee, you'll be alive tomorrow. Right now is your time to make Jesus Christ the Lord and Savior because right now could possibly be the last time you ever get. This could be the last time you ever get to hear the gospel. I don't know where everybody stands in this room. I, I used to assume at a church I used to preach at, I used to assume that everybody that came to church was saved, especially the people that came the longest. They were always there for years. And all of a sudden, one of them came to me broken. He said, I can't live like this anymore. And he was not saved. Shocked me. But God told me through that, never preach like you think everyone in the room is saved. Preach like there's always someone who's not. And so that's the way I have to do it. This could be your last chance you get. But you know what? The nice thing is, if you're still breathing, if you're still here, He offers to give you the free gift of eternal life. You still got the chance right now. You got to ask the Lord Jesus, forgive me of the sins that I've committed against you. I'm sorry for doing everything my way. Make Jesus your Lord by saying, Jesus, you're now the boss. And stand on the rock. No matter who comes against you, like we just saw Paul exemplify to us here. You do that. You believe in the Lord Jesus as your Savior. He says you will be, not might be, not probably. He says you will be saved. That's a promise of God. You want to get saved right now? Pray this after me, but it's got to come from your heart. You can't take it from mine. Pray this if you want to give your life to Christ. Father, I have lived life my own way. Your word, as it says, like we saw tonight, says I have sinned and I have fallen short. I don't want to be against you anymore. Lord, thank you for dying on the cross for me and taking the penalty on that day on the cross that you paid for 
that would have taken me an eternity in hell to pay. Thank you for the love that I cannot understand, yet I trust you with it. And that when you guarantee, Lord, when you say that I'll be saved, Lord, I want to take you up on that. Maybe, maybe, Lord, I, I don't understand everything and I never can, but Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm just tired. And I need peace, peace that I've never had. Lord, if I go tonight, I want to go knowing where I'll end up. Lord, I want to live in your blessing. I don't want to live with you against me. And Lord, so I ask you to forgive me of my sins that I've committed against you. And I accept your gift of eternal life. Thank you for doing this for me, Lord, and change me. Thank you for forgiving me and giving me this gift of eternal life, Lord. Now I want to give my life to you and use it for you. In Jesus' name, amen. If someone here just prayed that and you meant it, then according to the word of God, you're saved. I've shown you the scripture and I leave it between you and the Lord. However, if you have just accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, we'd like to hear about it so we can encourage you not to carve another notch in the, in the post, but just to help you and to encourage you and pray for you. And so we thank you, Lord God, for hearing our prayers tonight. May many of us come out there changed, more accountable, and more blessed than we were when we got here. We thank you for it, Father God, in Jesus' name. Amen.